Hi all. Uh, so here now a, a brief intro in how I think we should be using the cluster because it's a little bit different than normal OpenStack instances. Uh, there are some extra tools so that we can all work together and share the resources. And uh, there are some limitations for you to be aware of. So I'll just briefly show these so that you, I, as far as I'm concerned, you might be able to get started with, with this at least. So I'll just show you what it would look like once you're logged in. And for now, I'll just impersonate Aryan. Uh, so normally you would arrive at where I'm going now by making the SSH connection. And so here's then what you would see. Uh, we're logged in on Ubuntu 16.04 long-term stable, and it comes with this welcome message. And it, uh, it says, well, there's a new version, and uh, can you please uh, upgrade and all that? Just don't attempt, OK? Um, it's, uh, it's, first of all, it's just not even going to work because you don't have the rights, but also just don't bother. Um, so here we are in the home directory. Uh, so it's uh, slash home slash rn spec snyder and within that there's a little example script that I will go into uh, now this home directory is where uh, for you uh, most of the action is going to take place because if there's any tools that need to be installed for you specifically so not a generic thing such as a compiler or a database program or R or things like that, then you'll have to uh, compile them here locally. And, uh, and your data is also going to be here. And so you're not going to be able to make changes system-wide that might affect others. And then once you have your uh, thing set up, you have your data there and you have uh, installed or compiled all the tools that you need, then you are going to want to run a batch analysis. And uh, so here's how that works. There's a couple of more commands, which were actually the point of just showing you this. So first of all, uh, we use a system called slurm. And this means that all the commands start with the letter S. And uh, the first one that might be kind of useful to know about is sinfo, which uh, shows the state of the system as a whole. And um, here we can now see that the state is idle. So actually we're going to be able to run jobs. Um, and so this system is also uh, commonly used for clusters um, where there might be multiple nodes, but here we have just a single node with m very many cores, right? So that's why the node list is kind of small. Um, so then the next thing that is useful to see is um, what is currently in the queue. And so that's the command sq. And there's right now there's nothing there. So uh, the system is entirely available. And then... Um, the next thing that we're going to do is submit this, uh, the batch job, and I'll just show you real quick what that might look like, which brings us to this shell script. You all have a copy of that. Um, so if I open it, you see it's just in bash, um, and so actually most of these are comments, but these two comments here that start with s batch are uh, actually important. The first one is uh, where you give your job a name. And this doesn't have to be your username or anything because that's just known to the system. This is going to be a name that's meaningful to you, like transcriptome or whatever. And then the second one is uh, the output that is normally written to standard out. Uh, is then redirected to a file. So you're going to want to give this some kind of sensible name. Uh, of course, then in addition to that, this batch can produce other files um, and consume other files. But this is just what's written to the terminal. Okay, then what I did is I had here a, an uh, infinite loop, which is going to sleep for five seconds, and then say hello from iteration one, two, 
3 uh, and so on. Uh, this is just to show what it would look like if there was a very long job running. Okay. So uh, we're going to uh, submit a, a batch, so s batch, and then it's just the name of the script. And so now we've submitted job 10. And now if we uh, check the queue again, you see that uh, user Aryan, and this is also truncated, and the name is also truncated, so pick something short, uh, is running job number 10. You can see how long it's been running for, and the status this means running. Uh, this can go up to 72 hours, which is, uh, it counts in minutes, so that's 4,320 minutes, I think. Um, and it's going to be first in, first out, so if I now submit another batch, well, let's first see what is happening now. So, you see that now this text file has been created. And this just keeps growing, uh, adding these hello messages every five seconds. If I now submit another batch job, job number 11, and I check the queue, you can see that 10 is still running and 11 is waiting because, well, it's waiting for resources. So the reason is given here, there's no resources available. Um, if I think, well, maybe job number 10, there was something uh, wrong with it, um, then I might cancel it. So you can already guess what that's going to be. And then I checked Q again. You can see that now job 11 is running. Be aware that it's just going to overwrite this same text file, so uh, be a little smart about that. Um, and so there it, there it goes. Uh, so this, uh, presumably at some point this, this queue is going to be populated with a whole bunch of different jobs waiting to go one after the other. Um, and uh, I, I suppose that's how it's going to work. So let's just clean up here. And there's still this text file. Just remove that, bring it all in the original state. So there's now accounts for, uh, I think, all of you. And of course, we can just add more uh, uh, as needs arise. Um, I guess what might happen is at some point we are going to run into limits of storage. Uh, and so I suppose that a an, an modification that might happen at some point is that your home directory is also going to become the place where there's a mount point to an external volume so that there might be right here under home something that maybe is called data or something so that uh, the cluster doesn't become also a storage space, it actually moves somewhere else. Uh, we'll see how fast that goes, I guess. Um, and uh, once all the SSH keys are installed, we can uh, start running analyses. So, best of luck. Thanks.